Hello everyone, I am your host Shiraz Ahmed Khan and I would like to welcome you all in this new course with caption MS Word Complete Course. Viewers, before we start MS Word, I would like to introduce you some general terms or actions regarding the computer science because in order to understand or start working in Microsoft Word, we'll have to understand these terms first. The contents of today's video are on your screens right now. So let's start these points one by one. Viewers, just after you power on your system, and after the things are stabled, you see a screen on your laptops or PCs. And the name of this screen, it could be different. The background image could be different. But the technical name that we should use for this background is desktop. Onto the desktop, if you look at these images, there is a predefined action that is associated with these images. And these images are known as icons. And a specified action is associated with each and every icon of our computer system. If you look at the bottom of your screens, there is a horizontal grayish bar and its name is taskbar. If you start looking at this task taskbar from the bottom left portion, there is a button. It looks like a window and the name of this button is start button. It can be pressed with the help of left mouse button or there is a key onto the face of your keyboards and the Windows image is being displayed on the face of that particular key. If you click this start button, you can see further options. We'll come back to these options at the end of this video. For the time being, you just need to understand one thing, that is the name of this button is Start button. Just on to the right side of the Start button, there is a whitish area. And if you click inside it with the help of left mouse button again, the, you will see the cursor will start blinking there. This whitish area where we can actually type something to search from our computer systems. Its name is search bar. We'll be utilizing this search bar in our later videos. Moving further onto the right side of this search bar, you can see few icons. These icons may vary from one computer system to another computer system because usually we place frequently used software or programs onto the taskbar. So it varies from person to person, his or her requirements, that whatever he uses frequently, he or she may place it onto the taskbar. Moving further, you can see the time, the date, the language, the headphone speakers option, the uh, wireless or Wi-Fi connections, the battery symbol. So all these things are placed on our grayish horizontal bar. That is what we call task bar. In our today's video, we are not going to discuss all of these icons and the associated actions with these. We are just focusing on one icon and its name is this PC. Viewers, 
if you click once onto any of the objects of your computer system that object will be selected or highlighted but if you double click onto any of the objects by objects we mean a file a software or an icon it will start its execution so if you double click this pc it will be opened in a new window and you can see that onto the title bar of this window the caption of that icon is being displayed that is this pc so we can say that we have opened this pc so what is technically inside this icon viewers in order to understand this that what is being displayed in front of us right now we'll have to focus on one device that is inbuilt in our computer systems by inbuilt we mean that when you buy a laptop or a desktop computer already that device is there and the device that i'm talking about is the hard disk drive shortly we call it hdd or just hard disk viewers let me add something into your knowledge that every hard disk it can be logically divided into different portions or areas or segments and this process is known as partitioning of the hard disk why we actually divide the hard disk into different portions is just to properly manage our files our folders our data our software packages that's why we divide disk logically into different portions so in my case the hard disk of this laptop it's divided into four logical drives and two things are asso associated with each and every logical drive its name that is c you can clearly view this and its name viewers we can change this logical drive letter c and we can also change this name of the logical drive for example currently the name of the c logical drive is os but we are able to change it as well similarly there is a d drive its name is data we have an e drive its name is multimedia and we have an f drive with us and its name is uninstalled software in your case definitely the scenario would be different because your hard disk it might be partitioned into a different number of logical drives and you can see different letters over there in your systems so it's not a point of worry the thing is that we should know that hard disks of our computer systems they are divided into different partitions and each partition is known as a logical drive our next task is to learn how to create rename and delete folders in our computer systems because we are going to use these things in our upcoming videos so for example if you want to explore that what is inside this logical drive you'll have to double click onto that drive if you double click d drive of your system it will show you some folders and files if you double click e drive you can see something onto your screens if you click f drive it will show you uh, whatever it contains all the folders all the files all the software packages as well so whenever you double click any of the logical drives you would be actually exploring that what is being stored inside that particular logical drive so our next task is to learn how to work with folders for that purpose double click 
any of your logical drives to explore or open it. And now we are going to learn that how can we create a folder. Vue's folder is just like a file cover where you can place inside the pages for better management. Similarly, folders, they themselves do not do anything except we use them to separate our files depending on to their nature or the work in which in the work that we are saving in, into those files. So we can separate the things by placing them in different folders of our choices. D drive, it's in front of your screens right now. Your case could be different from mine. There is a white area you all can see. And this white area is known as blank area or simply white blank area. In order to create a folder onto the logical drive D, although it has already many folders, you just need to right click with the help of your mouse. You can see this context menu is appearing. Let me repeat it. In order to create folder, there is no need to right click onto any of these folders. Right click onto the empty area or the white area of your screens. Then you can see this context menu. And from this context menu, go to the option new. It will further pop up onto its right side few more options for you and choose the first option that is folder. When you click this, you will observe that a new folder is created for you and its default name is there that is new folder. This new folder uh, name is highlighted and the indication that it's highlighted is that its background color is blue which shows that the caption new folder, the default caption for the new folder for this newly created folder, it's highlighted, it's selected. In order to give it a name of your choice, you need not to delete or remove this default caption. Just start typing that word or words, whatever you feel that it suits your needs. For example, I am giving it a name MS Word and I did not delete or remove the previous caption. Straight away start typing the words. It will replace the previous caption because it's already highlighted. Once the name is completely typed, just press the enter key from the so because we have successfully created a new folder and we have named it as well. Now let's learn that once the folder is created, are we able to create subfolders inside it? Yes, definitely we can. And in order to do that, double click onto this folder. Look, it says this folder is empty. So now we can create a subfolder inside it. And once again, the procedure, the process remains the same right click in the white area or the empty area again from the context menu choose new and finally choose folder so uh, for example if we give it the name practice once the name is typed press enter key so viewers we have successfully created a folder and then we have successfully created a subfolder inside that folder the name of the main folder is MS Word and the name of the subfolder is practice. Now we are going to learn that once the folder is created, it's named, we are going to learn that we can rename it as well at any 
later stage. For that purpose, now previously we were clicking, we were right clicking in an empty area. This time we are going to right click onto the folder name. And if this blue line appears, it means that we have successfully right clicked onto the folder name. And now the context menu is appearing, but this context menu, it's totally different from the previous one. From this context menu, choose rename. And if you choose rename, look, the word practice is highlighted. It means that we can now replace the word practice with any other word. Or if you want to make modifications in this word, you can make modifications as well because now the control is inside the folder name. So let's rename it with the name testing. And once the folder is successfully renamed, finally press the enter key. So viewers, we have seen how to rename a folder. Now finally, we are going to learn how to delete a folder. Once again, the process remains the same. Right click onto the folder name and from the context menu, choose the delete option. Once the delete option is chosen, the folder is removed and it's thrown, it's sent to the recycle bin. We'll discuss it in the upcoming videos that what do we mean by recycle bin and why it's thrown to the recycle bin first. So viewers, we have learned different things in today's video. Finally, the last thing you should know is how to shut down your computer system. And for that purpose, click onto the start button. And from these options, the very first option from the bottom side, you can see the power option. If you click this, it will show you three more options and you can restart your system or shut down your system. It will close all the apps, all the folders, files onto your system and finally it will shut down your system. So that's it for today. We'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.